Sergio Osmeña Sr., PLH, Spanish pronunciation, Se dots yo Osmia, the 9th of September 1878 to the 19th of October 1961, was a Filipino politician who served as the third president of the Philippines from 1944 to 1946. He was vice president under Manuel L. Quezon. Upon Quezon's sudden death in 1944, Osmeña succeeded him, at age 65, becoming the oldest holder of the office, a record he held until 71-year-old Rodrigo Duterte was elected in 2016. A founder of the Nacionalista Party, Osmeña was also the first Visayan to become president. Prior to his accession in 1944, Osmeña served as governor of Cebu from 1906 to 1907, member and first speaker of the Philippine House of Representatives from 1907 to 1922, and senator from the 10th Senatorial District for 13 years, in which capacity he served as Senate President pro tempore. In 1935, he was nominated to be the running mate of Senate President Manuel L. Quezon for the presidential election that year. The duo were overwhelmingly re-elected in 1941. He was patriarch of the prominent Osmeña family, which includes his son, former Senator Sergio Osmeña Jr., and his grandsons, Senators Sergio Osmeña III and John Henry Osmeña, ex-Governor Lito Osmeña, and current Cebu City Mayor Tomas Osmeña. Early life and career Osmeña was born in Cebu City to Juana Osmeña y Suico, who was reportedly only 14 years of age at the time. Owing to the circumstances of his birth, the identity of his father had been a closely guarded family secret, surnamed Sanson. Although carrying the stigma of being an illegitimate child, Juana never married his father, he did not allow this aspect to affect his standing in society. The Osmeña family, a rich and prominent clan of Chinese Filipino heritage with vast business interests in Cebu, warmed to him as he established himself as a prominent figure in local society. Osmeña received his elementary education at the Colegio de San Carlos and graduated in 1892. Osmeña continued his education in Manila, studying in San Juan de Latran College where he first met Manuel L. Quezon, a classmate of his, as well as Juan Simulong and Emilio Jacinto. He took up law at the University of Santo Tomas and was second place in the bar examination in 1903. He served on the war staff of General Emilio Aguinaldo as a courier and journalist. In 1900, he founded the Cebu newspaper, El Nuevo Dia, English. The New Day which lasted for three years. Public service in Cebu When Cebu Governor Juan Climaco was sent as a member of the Board of Commissioners of the St. Louis Purchase Expedition, Osmeña was appointed acting governor. When Climaco returned, he was appointed as provincial fiscal. His stint there elevated him in politics when he was elected governor of Cebu in 1906. Congressional career House of Representatives While governor, he ran for election to the First National Assembly of 1907 and was elected as the first speaker of that body. Osmeña was 29 years old and already the highest-ranking Filipino official. He and another provincial politician, Manuel L. Quezon of Tayabas, set up the Nacionalista Party as a foil to the Partido Federalista of Manila-based politicians. In his first years as Speaker, he was plagued with organizational burdens as the National Assembly is still organizing. The members of the Assembly sought to establish legislative procedures which were constantly rejected by the American superiors because they still perceive that Filipinos are incapable to be independent. Three important bills from the Assembly were rejected by the Philippine Commission. The repeal of the Sedition Law which imposed penalties on any Filipino who advocated independence. The repeal of the Flag Law which banned display of the Filipino flag. The grant of more powers to the local governments, however, it did not stop him from presiding over the important legislation the Assembly has passed. The creation of the Council of State and the Board of Control enabled the Philippine Legislature to share some of the executive powers of the American Governor General. In 1916, the Jones Law was passed replacing the Philippine Commission with a Philippine Senate. Quezon-Osmeña Rivalry 
Osmeña was friends and classmates with Manuel Quezon who was the majority floor leader under Osmeña's speakership. When the Jones Law was passed, Quezon was elected as Senate President and Osmeña retained his post as Speaker. Senate In 1922 Osmeña was elected to the Senate representing the 10th Senatorial District. He went to the United States as part of the Osrocks mission in 1933, to secure passage of the Hare Haas Cutting Independence Bill which was superseded by the Tidings McDuffie Act in March 1934. Vice Presidency In 1924, Quezon and Osmeña reconciled and joined forces in the Partido Nacionalista Consolidado against the threat of an emerging opposition from the Demócrata Party. The reunited Nacionalista Party dominated the political scene until the second breakup when the members polarized into pros and antis in 1934. Quezon and Osmeña again reconciled for the 1935 presidential election. In 1935 Quezon and Osmeña won the Philippines' first national presidential election under the banner of the Nacionalista Party. Quezon obtained nearly 68% of the vote against his two main rivals, Emilio Aguinaldo and Bishop Gregorio Aglipe, they were inaugurated on 15 November 1935. Quezon had originally been barred by the Philippine Constitution from seeking re-election. However, in 1940, constitutional amendments were ratified allowing him to seek re-election for a fresh term ending in 1943. In the 1941 presidential elections, Quezon was re-elected over former Senator Juan Simulong with nearly 82% of the vote. Re-elected in 1941, Osmeña remained vice president during the Japanese occupation when the government was in exile. As vice president, Osmeña concurrently served as Secretary of Public Instruction from 1935 to 1940, and again from 1941 to 1944. The outbreak of World War II and the Japanese invasion resulted in periodic and drastic changes to the government structure. Executive Order 390, the 22nd of December 1941 abolished the Department of the Interior and established a new line of succession. Executive Order 396, the 24th of December 1941, further reorganized and grouped the cabinet with the functions of Secretary of Justice assigned to the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Quezon Osmeña Impasse By 1943, the Philippine government in exile was faced with a serious crisis. According to the 1935 Constitution, the official term of President Quezon was to expire on 30 December 1943, and Vice President Sergio Osmeña would automatically succeed him in the presidency. This eventuality was brought to the attention of President Quezon by Osmeña himself, who wrote the former to this effect. Aside from replying to this letter informing Vice President Osmeña that it would not be wise and prudent to effect any such change under the circumstances, President Quezon issued a press release along the same line. Osmeña then requested the opinion of U.S. Attorney General Homer Cummings, who upheld Osmeña's view as more in keeping the law. Quezon, however, remained adamant. He accordingly sought President Franklin D. Roosevelt's decision. The latter chose to remain aloof from the controversy, suggesting instead that the Philippine officials themselves solve the impasse. A cabinet meeting was then convened by President Quezon. Aside from Quezon and Osmeña, others present in this momentous meeting were Resident Commissioner Joaquin Elizaldi, Brig. General Carlos P. Romulo, and Cabinet Secretaries Andres Soriano and Jaime Hernandez. Following a spirited discussion, the Cabinet adopted Elizaldi's opinion favoring the decision and announced his plan to retire in California. After the meeting, however, Vice President Osmeña approached the President and broached his plan to ask the American Congress to suspend the constitutional provisions for presidential succession until after the Philippines should have been liberated. This legal way out was agreeable to President Quezon and the members of his cabinet. Proper steps were taken to carry out the proposal. Sponsored by Senator Tidings and Congressman Bell, the pertinent resolution was unanimously approved by the Senate on a voice vote and passed the House of Representatives by a vote of 181 to 107, on 10 November 1943. Presidency 
Osmeña became president of the Commonwealth on Quezon's death in 1944. He was sworn in by Associate Justice Robert Jackson in Washington, D.C. He returned to the Philippines the same year with General Douglas MacArthur and the Liberation Forces. After the war, Osmeña restored the Commonwealth government and the various executive departments. He continued the fight for Philippine independence. For the presidential election of 1946, Osmeña refused to campaign, saying that the Filipino people knew of his record of 40 years of honest and faithful service. He lost to Manuel Roxas, who won 54% of the vote and became president of the Independent Republic of the Philippines. Administration and Cabinet War Cabinet 1944-45 on 8 August 1944, President Osmeña issued Executive Order 15 W reorganizing and consolidating the executive departments of the Commonwealth Government. The reorganization of the government after it was re-established on Philippine soil was undertaken with Executive Order No. 27, 27 February 1945. Cabinet and Judicial Appointments 1945-46 Executive Order No. 27, 27 February 1945 was issued upon the restoration of civilian authority to the Government of the Commonwealth, and members of the new Cabinet appointed on 8 March 1945. Subsequent renaming and mergers of departments have separate listings. Liberation Osmeña accompanied U.S. General Douglas MacArthur during the landing of U.S. forces in Leyte on 20 October 1944, starting the liberation of the Philippines during the Second World War. Upon establishing the beachhead, MacArthur immediately transferred authority to Osmeña, the successor of Manuel Quezon, as Philippine Commonwealth President. Domestic Policies Restoration of the Commonwealth with Manila liberated, General of the Army, Douglas MacArthur, on behalf of the United States, turned over the reins of Government of the Philippines to Commonwealth President, Sergio Osmeña, on 27 February 1945, amidst brief, but impressive, ceremonies held at the Malacañang Palace. President Osmeña, after thanking the United States through General MacArthur, announced the restoration of the Government of the Commonwealth of the Philippines and worked out the salvation of the Philippines from the ravages of war. Government reorganization President Osmeña proceeded with the immediate reorganization of the government and its diverse dependencies. On 8 April 1945, he formed his cabinet, administering the oath of office to its component members. Later, President Osmeña received the Council of State to help him solve the major problems confronting the nation. Government offices and bureaus were gradually re-established. A number of new ones were created to meet needs then current. Also restored were the Supreme Court of the Philippines and the inferior courts. The Court of Appeals was abolished and its appellate jurisdiction was transferred to the Supreme Court, the members of which were increased to 11, 1 Chief Justice and 10 Associate Justice, in order to attend to the new responsibilities. Slowly but steadily, as the liberating forces freed the other portions of the country, provincial and municipal governments were established by the Commonwealth to take over from the military authorities. Rehabilitation of the Philippine National Bank Following the restoration of the Commonwealth government, the Congress was reorganized. Manuel Roxas and Elpidio Quirino were elected Senate President and Senate President pro tempore respectively. At the House of Representatives, José Zaleta of Iloilo was elected Speaker and Prospero Sanidad as Speaker pro tempore. The opening session of the Congress was personally addressed by President Osmeña, who reported on the Commonwealth government in exile and proposed vital pieces of legislation. The first Commonwealth Congress earnestly took up the various pending assignments to solve the pressing matters affecting the Philippines, especially in regard to relief, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. The first bill enacted was Commonwealth Act No. 672 Rehabilitating the Philippine National Bank. People's Court Yielding to American pressure, on 25 September 1945, the Congress enacted C.A. No. 682 creating the People's Court and the Office of Special Prosecutors to deal with the pending cases of collaboration. 
Foreign Policies United Nations Charter President Osmeña sent the Philippine delegation, which was headed by Carlos P. Romulo, to the San Francisco gathering for the promulgation of the Charter of the United Nations on 26 June 1945. Other members of the delegation were Maximo Cala, Carlos P. Garcia, Pedro Lopez, Francisco Delegado, Urbano Zafra, Alejandro Melcher, and Vicente Cinco. The 28th signatory nation of the United Nations, the Philippines was one of the 51 nations that drafted the UN Charter. Once approved by Philippine delegation, the UN Charter was ratified by the Congress of the Philippines and deposited with the U.S. State Department on of October 1945. Foreign Relations Office To prepare for the forthcoming independent status of the Philippines, President Osmeña created the Office of Foreign Relations. Vicente Cinco was appointed as its first commissioner, with cabinet rank. In this connection, President Osmeña also entered into an agreement with the United States government to send five Filipino trainees to the U.S. State Department to prepare themselves for diplomatic service. They were sent by U.S. State Department to the United States embassies in Moscow and Mexico City and consulates in Saigon and Singapore. International Banking On 5 December 1945, President Osmeña appointed Resident Commissioner Carlos P. Romulo as his representative to accept Philippine membership in the International Monetary Fund and in the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which bodies had been conceived in the Bretton Woods Agreement, in which the Philippine had also taken part. Romulo signed said membership on 27 December 1945 on behalf of the Philippines. Bell Trade Act On 30 April 1946, the United States Congress, at last approved the Bell Act, which as early as 20 January had been reported to the Ways and Means Committee of the Lower House, having been already passed by the Senate. President Osmeña and Resident Commissioner Ramulo had urged the passage of this bill, with United States High Commissioner, Paul V. McNutt, exerting similar pressure. The act gave the Philippines eight years of free trade with the United States, then 20 years during which tariffs would be upped gradually until they were in line with the rest of the American tariff policy. The law also fixed some quotas for certain products, sugar 850,000 long tons, cordage 6 million pounds, coconut oil 200,000 long tons, cigars 200 million pounds. This aid was coupled with that to be obtained from the recently passed Tidings Damage Bill, which provided some $900 million for payment of war damages, of which $1 million was earmarked to compensate for church losses. The sum of $240 million was to be periodically allocated by the United States President as goodwill. Also, 60 million pieces of surplus property were transferred to the Philippines government. 1946 Presidential Election Soon after the reconstitution of the Commonwealth government in 1945 Senators Manuel Roxas, Elpidio Quirino and their allies called for the holding on an early national election to choose the President and Vice President of the Philippines and members of the Congress. In December, 1945 the House Insular Affairs of the United States Congress approved the joint resolution setting the election date no later than 30 April 1946. Prompted by this congressional action, President Sergio Osmeña called the Philippine Congress to a three-day special session. Congress enacted Commonwealth Act No. 725, setting the election on 23 April 1946, and this was approved by President Osmeña on 5 January 1946. Three parties presented their respective candidates for the different national elective positions. These were the Nacionalista Party conservative, Osmeña wing, the liberal wing of the Nacionalista Party, and the Partido Modernista. The Nacionalistas had Osmeña and Senator Eulogio Rodriguez as their candidates for president and vice president respectively. The Modernistas chose Hilario Camino Moncado and Luis Salvador for the same positions. The standard bearers of the liberals were Senators Manuel Roxas and Elpidio Quirino. On 3 January 1946, President Osmeña announced his re-election bid. On the 22nd of January 1946 Eulogio Rodriguez was nominated as Osmeña. 
S. running mate for vice president, in a convention held at Chiro. S. Club in Manila. According to the Manila Chronicle, the convention opened at 10.15 in the morning when the acting secretary of the party, Vicente Farmoso, called the CONFAB to order. Congressman Jose C. Romero, who delivered the keynote speech accused Senate President Manuel Roxas and his followers of fanning the flames of discontent among the people, of capitalizing on the people's hardship, and of minimizing the accomplishment of the Osmeña administration. These men with the Messiah complex have been the bane of the country and of the world. This is the mentality that produces Hitler's and the Mussolini's, and their desire to climb to power, they even want to destroy the party which placed them where they are today." Senator Carlos P. Garcia, who delivered the nomination speech for President Sergio Osmeña, made a long recital of Osmeña's achievements, his virtues as public official and as private citizen. Entering the convention hall at about 7.30 p.m., President Osmeña, accompanied by the Committee on Notification, was greeted with rounds of cheer and applause as he ascended the platform. President Osmeña delivered his speech which was a general outline of his future plans once elected. He emphasized that as far as his party is concerned, independence is a close issue. It is definitely coming on 4 July 1946. On 19 January 1946, Senator Roxas announced his candidacy for president in a convention held in Santa Ana Cabaret in Manila. According to the Manila Chronicle, less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 more than 3,000 by conservative estimate there were only 1,000 plus delegates, party members and hero worshippers jammed into suburban, well-known Santa Ana Cabaret biggest in the world to acclaim ex-Katipunero and Bagong Katipunan organizer Manuel Acuña Roxas as the guidon bearer of the Nacionalista Party's liberal wing. The delegates, who came from all over the islands, met in formal convention from 10.50 a.m. and did not break up till about 5.30 p.m. They elected one. Mariano J. Cuenco, professional osmenophobe, as temporary chairman, two. Jose Avellino and ex-pharmacist Antonio Zacarias permanent chairman and secretary, respectively, three. Nominated 44 candidates for senators, four. Heard the Generalissimo himself deliver an oratorical masterpiece consisting of 50% attacks against the Osmeña administration, 50% promises, pledges. Rabid Roxasites greeted the Roxas acceptance speech with hysterical applause. A split developed among the members of the Nationalista Party over issues. President Osmeña tried to prevent the split in the Nationalista Party by offering Senator Roxas the position of Philippine Regent Commissioner to the United States but Roxas turned down the offer. A new political organization was born, the Liberal Wing of the Nationalista Party, which would later become the Liberal Party of the Philippines. The election was generally peaceful except in some places, especially in the province of Pampanga. According to a controversial Decision of the Electoral Tribunal of the House of Representatives in Melitón Solomon v. Luis Tarek. Pampanga was under the terroristic clutches and control of the Hukbalahaps. So terrorized were the people of a riot, at one time, 200 persons abandoned their homes, their work, and their food, all their belongings in a mass evacuation to the Poblacion due to fear and terror. A total of 2,218,847 voters went to the polls to elect a president and vice president, who were to be the Commonwealth's last and the Republic's first. Four days after election day, the Liberal Party candidates were proclaimed victors. Roxas registered an overwhelming majority of votes in 34 provinces and nine cities, Abra, Agusan, Albay, Antique, Bataan, Batanes, Batangas, Bukidnon, Bulacan, Cagayan, Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, Capiz, Cavite, Cotabato, Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, Isabela, Laguna, La Union, Leyte, Marinduque, Mindoro, Misamis Oriental, Negros Occidental, Nueva Vizcaya, Palawan, Pangasinan, Rizal, Rimblan, Samar, Sorsogan, Sulu, Surigao, Tayabas, Zambales, Manila, Quezon City, Bacolod City, Negros Occidental, Iloilo City, Iloilo, Baguio City, Mountain Province, Zamboanga City, Zamboanga, Tagaytay City, City, Cavite, Cavite City, Cavite, and San Pablo City, Laguna.
The Liberal Party won 9 out of 16 contested seats in the Philippine Senate and in the House of Representatives. The Liberals won a majority with 50 seats while the Nationalists and the Democratic Alliance winning 33 and 6 seats, respectively. Post-presidency and death After his electoral defeat, Osmeña retired to his home in Cebu. He died of pulmonary edema at age 83 on 19 October 1961 at the Veterans Memorial Medical Center in Quezon City. He was buried at Manila North Cemetery, Manila on 26 October 1961. Personal life Family on 10 April 1901, he married Estefania Chiang Veloso. The couple had ten children Nicasio Veloso Osmeña, Vicente Veloso Osmeña, Edelderto Veloso Osmeña, Milagros Veloso Osmeña, Emilio Veloso Osmeña, Maria Paloma Veloso Osmeña, Jesus Veloso Osmeña, Teodoro Veloso Osmeña, Jose Veloso Osmeña, and Sergio Veloso Osmeña Jr. In 1920, two years after the death of his first wife, Osmeña married Esperanza Limjap. The couple had three more children, namely, Ramon Limjap Osmeña, Rosalina Limjap Osmeña, and Victor Limjap Osmeña. Descendants Several of Osmeña's descendants became prominent political figures in their own right. Sergio Osmeña Jr., son and former senator, Sergio Osmeña III, grandson and former senator John Henry Osmeña, grandson and former congressman and former senator, incumbent mayor of Toledo, Cebu Tomas Osmeña, grandson and mayor of Cebu City, former 2nd District Representative Emilio Mario Osmeña, grandson and former governor of Cebu Rogelio Veloso Osmeña, grandson and former councillor of Cebu City Renato Veloso Osmeña, grandson and former vice mayor of Cebu City Notes References Cullinane, Michael, Illustrado Politics, Filipino Elite Responses to American Rule, 1898-1908, Ateneo de Manila University Press, 2004, ISBN 971-550-439-6 Zaid, Gregorio F. 1984. Philippine History and Government. National Bookstore Printing Press. External links the Philippine Presidency Project Philippines Archipelago, Sergio Osmeña Sergio Osmeña at WN Sergio Osmeña on the Presidential Museum and Library